X was saying with us now, in theory, government institutions play an important role in shaping and incentivizing the way society and organizations behave by setting the rules of the game. These rules guide economic and political interactions, determine how goods and services are delivered, shape how budgets are spent, and regulate the justice system. But by themselves, these rules are not always effective. With the ineffective government institutions we have in Nigeria, how can we build a country that gives its citizens freedom to thrive? Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waysho Africa One with the hashtag Waze or send us an SMS, SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038463. <laughs> now, everybody is just arguing on top of this Kama matter. Please keep Kama aside. Lami, yeah. you are the lawyer here. Yes. Public institutions, where are we? You know, it's always been my baby. Mm. I've always thought about always, it. You've always hammered I've on always strengthening hammered our institution. I know quite a number of people lose the focus. People do not understand that there's a direct, there's a nexus between the public institution and leadership in Nigeria. We're all facing the government. And we need to see from the angle that the first thing that we have to do if we're not going to go anywhere in Nigeria, we have to strengthen our institutions. Mm. I know that for sure that if the institutions are strengthened, Come political, even all these political leaders and all that, they'll come in and go. They won't be able to change anything. Mm. But there's, a, there's too much dependence on the political actors. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an impediment to service delivery. That's my take. All right. So, Uti, how about you? Um, I somewhat agree with Lamy. I think that, yes, there is a gap between the public institutions. And I think it's one of the challenges and the reasons why we're still where we are today as the citizenry. But I also think that, just like our code says, we don't have enough strength in the voice of the citizenry to actually demand change. Mm. But where I sort of disagree is that when we have strong leadership in any organization, the leader goes in and steers the boat. Now, whether or not it takes you longer because you realize that what you assessed from the external is different to what you meet when you are now at the helm of affairs, mm -hmm. it may take you longer but you should be able to make impact. There should be some visible effect of you as a leader. So when continuously and over time, the public institutions not only fail to grow, they actually regress, you then must look back at the leadership to say, look, what is going on here? Okay, so because are you saying in essence? So, okay, what you're saying in essence is mm -hmm. that Strong men, strong political actors will make strong institutions. They should, I'm as leaders. I'm saying strong institutions will make strong No, where we actors. are right now in Nigeria, okay. what do you think should come first in terms of strengthening the institution? Do you think it's the leadership that should come first? Absolutely. The leadership. Because, Honestly, because where we are in Nigeria, Nigeria I don't have an answer it to takes that. the willpower. Maybe we should... Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, let's, let's go to Dr. B. Yes. And one thing I can tell you about mm. Nigerians is that we're quick to fall in line. Mm -hmm. So if you had a strong leader, mm -hmm. and we have seen, I mean, our guest today is, is evidence of that. When you have strong leadership, you see progress. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so let me bring in our guest <laughs> now. Dr. Moise Banyere is a social commentator, a senior advocate of Nigeria, and a very passionate and patriotic Nigerian who has occupied various leadership roles, and he has joined us this evening to dissect our current challenges in our institutions. Thank you so much, Dr. Banyere, for joining us. Again, we are happy to My host pleasure. you. All right, so I'm good. Uh, good evening, viewers. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> so, um, quickly before I, I'll come to Uti, I just wanted to ask you now, in in line with what Lamy just said, is it the leadership? Is it the leader that would make a strong institution, or it is um, because currently accessing our own Nigeria now? You know where we are right now. Do you think if a strong leader comes into power today, we're going to have a strong um, institution built? I certainly do not think so. Uh, you see, there is a major dichotomy between leadership and institution. That is the problem, the, the, the challenge we always have. Uh, let me first dissect it for you clearly, that institution or building the institution is a function of the rule of law. Mm. And I will explain in a very, very elementary manner. There is hardly any institution in Nigeria today without a legal framework. In other words, there is always a law establishing it stipulating the function, the roles, the management, corporate governance principles, and all other issues within it. So all that is required 
to ensure that those institutions function is compliance with the dictates of those laws. But of course, what we find is that because along the line, you discover that so many people that today, as most of these institutions are grossly incompetent that they do not even know the import of those legislation, much less be able to stand up to it. And that is where the challenge is first and foremost, that we must recognize that they all are babies, or if I can put it that way, they derive their existence from a particular law. And those law already insulate them against undue intervention. But unfortunately, all those laws we do not respect again. So we need to go back to the rule of law essentially on that point. Mm. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad, sir, that you mentioned the rule of law because my, my take or what I would be very interested to hear is for us to have effective, um, or these public institutions exist rather, to effectively manage or implement policies and to make the lives of the citizenry better. Now, your leadership has shown or yielded the kind of fruits where you have made great strides whilst you were in, at the head of some of these um, public institutions. So I would very much like to hear what your assessment is of the current state of our public institutions. You already started it by talking about the leadership not understanding the policies and the laws with which they sit on. But what would be your general assessment of, of our public institutions today? Well, without fear of contradiction, I would say that in the really, really bad shape, bad shape all over. In fact, you hardly even have what is called institutional memory again in any one of them. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the turnover of even the leadership is frightening. And there is the demoralizing factor of it that even people within the system that have been trained over time that are supposed to be custodians of the memory or the event or act of this institution, the manner in which we treat them is uh, something that is a bit worrisome. And I give a good example. You find it's a, a situation where somebody who had joined an institution in Nigeria today, of course, the ultimate will be that one day with hard work, honesty, and all other EU training capacity, you add that institution. By the time you get to the penitent level, somebody somewhere will just deem it with that somebody of his clan or his brother or his uh, a relative or associate needs to occupy that position and is brought in without any and in most cases without even knowledge of what they even do there the bad one which i've even seen is that when they get in we even expect that such a person will try as much as possible to look at the law setting up that particular institution but in most cases they do not even bother they don't even know i can tell you for free that most of the heads of the institution public institution today we call them and ask them about the law or the import or some of the provision for the they are totally ignorant of it. Then what do you expect in such circumstances? They do things outside the, the, outside the law itself, setting up, but most of the times, I would do not, even as citizen health matters, most of the time we give them the backing. I give you a very interesting one. Department of State Security is an institution on its own. Mm -hmm. You will recall during the confirmation or non-confirmation of Mago as EFTC chairman, most Nigerians, including you journalists, your view was, ah, what is happening? This is chaos. Ah, ah, this is anarchy. How will one government nominate somebody and another institution is writing against that person? That is that, the type of warp reasoning or logic that we put in place to support what is wrong. DSS and the institution has its own brief. In fact, PSS can write to the Senate in respect of a sitting president. This is what obtained in all other civilizations. And that is the correct thing, even according to the legal framework. But what we tell, ah, no, it can't happen. That is why today you will see police, somebody abuses the president or any other minister or somebody, and before you even know, before they are even instructed, they are at your door. Because they do not even know the limit of their authority or what, or what they ought to do by the dictates of their law. So for me, we right now we have a major challenge when it comes to our public institutions. I reckon that most of the people that are even piloting them and not even competent in the first instance to help social institutions, mm -hmm. much less even knowing what the business or the objective or functions of the institutions are. Mm -hmm. So in summary, I think I want to say that the institutions are not in good hand, and certainly they cannot be in good shape. Yeah, go ahead. OK, um, Dr. Banner, I'm going to take you back. The f I, I want to know what are the root causes of this institutional failure. And I'll go back to pre-independence. 
so, uh, some school of thought have said that the colonial masters bequeathed to us an already failed civil service, you know, public institutions. And some are saying that, no, reverse is the case. They gave us a good, they gave structure. us structure. Well, mm -hmm. um, the military came and um, upset everything. Or the politicians came later and um, destroyed everything. So what's your take on this? Do you think is the pre-colonial masters, sorry, the colonial masters that recruited this because they already did not want Nigeria, to, most of their co uh, colonies, actually, to, um, to thrive after they leave. So do you think it is true? Is that the root cause? Yeah. That is not correct, that is not correct at all. They okay. recruited a uh, very, very strong and vibrant institution. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what has happened to us, in fact, some few days ago, I was reading, going through the book written by the late Seg uh, Bafemi Alor, Thoughts on the Nigeria. I could, I could see there that part of his advocate was strictly that when it comes to civil service and by extension public servant in public institution, they must be treated in the same way. In other words, everything revolving around them must be merit-based. Promotion must be ba merit-based. Competence must take its pride of place. And in fact, they must be insulated against undue uh, sacking. Hmm. But what has happened over time is that right from the military, which the current, uh, the admin, the politicians also inherited, is that we have more or less uh, uh, fashioned out the system in which they are totally insecure now. So once the insecurity factor comes in, they are so timid this day to do the right thing again. And that is what has happened to us. And unfortunately, with due respect to my own constituency, my constituency is supposed to be the correctional service in this regard. What I mean is the judiciary. Mm -hmm. For example, if you are improperly sacked, for example, you should be able to approach the court and go and ventilate your right. But because of the, the congestion in those places, it takes years for it. It has happened before. You recall the case of Justice Salami. What happened to Justice Salami, who was strongly retired? Of course, by the time he got they got midstream, his tenor a statutory pension as setting. And that's the kind of the thing that government also capitalizes on. To say that, well, go to court. We know you are sank you, we've sacked you wrongly. Go to court. By the time you are done, we are done with governors. And this is the challenge that we have in our hand. So I do not believe it's a colonial issue. It is the hand made of we Nigerians ourselves. And the, by the law, everything, as far as I'm concerned, is even okay. Today, as we are talking, everything is okay. It's just the operators of our laws that are behaving uh, in a manner uh, that uh, is reckless with impunity. That is what is obtainable now. That, that is what is happening. Do Dr. Banire, you, when you were talking about, especially when you made reference to the DSS, you know, that they could actually write um, directly to the, to the presidency, um, I, I um, myself and Uti were whispering amongst ourselves, is it not somebody that has full knowledge of what that institution holds or what the, the powers that the institution um, wields that would understand what they are supposed to do. How many of our institutional leaders or would I call leaders that, that, that govern some of these institutions, how much do they even know about the kind of power that they wield? We are on the same page on that. I made the point earlier that yeah. most of the people are even ignorant so, of the statute setting them up. It's so that is why they cannot even defend their brief. So that's what People I'm saying. People where so, they are maltreated or so they are given wrong or illegal checking. or unlawful instruction, they can't do anything. They are helpless because they don't even know. Uh -huh. That is a major challenge. So, no, wait. So, do, shouldn't, shouldn't we be checking, you know, if these people are actually knowledgeable to head this, this institution? That's what he's saying. My, uh, my take on that is political dependency. All their selection, uh, appointment comes from political actors. So, how do you expect them to be dependent when they get there? Well, Dr. B, what's your take on that? <laughs> let, me, let me take Well, I agree, I, I agree with you that ordinarily, these people are supposed to be the best. Like I said to you, they're supposed to be round old, I mean, yes, uh, round the peg in the round old. But what, that's not it. You find a square one in the round old. That is what is happening because of patronage. But there are so many ways to skin a car that you can even patronize people without necessarily endangering the system and uh, by extension endangering all of us. What is obtainable now is that nobody cares about the competence happen. Nobody even looks at any CV. You just find somebody somewhere that is just jobless or looking for alternative address or survivor. You just put him anywhere. 
And that is why virtually <laughs> all of them are crumbling so. daily in our system. That is the, 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 the scenario we have found ourselves. Dr. B, I, I think, oh, Dr. Vanure, <laughs> for me, um, I, what about, can we look into the employment system? How the civil servants I even, are even employed in, in the, the first, first place. Because I remember when I was growing up, the best of minds were admitted into the civil service. But the opposite is the situation now. When you finish from school with a third class or a pass, people will tell you, go to the ministry. So how is it going to work? How, is, how are we going to have an efficient system when the brightest minds are in the private sector? Nobody is going to the public sector again. And people that are actually going to the public sector, they are going there because of their purse. It's the fastest way to make money outside of governance. What do you think? Well, I think I agree with you substantially on that point. The reality is that unlike other uh, progressive jurisdictions, like take Singapore, for example, it's always the best of them that you find in the civil service. Even in the UK, most of the people we find are usually the best of them. But in our whole system, is those who could not find, who could not compete elsewhere, that makes use of the civil service most of the time. So the reality is that it's, uh, it's garbage in, garbage out. It's what you put in that you get at the end of the day. So ideas, innovations do not even come from this kind of people. So all that they are there for is how to survive within the system, period. So until we reverse the system, and get their best inside the place. And it's a function of the condition of service. If the construction of service is still what it is, and it's not attractive and competitive with the private sector, mm -hmm. you continue to have the drag in the civil service. <laughs> and that challenge will continue. You hear that, that is the reality. People 20,000, 20, you, 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 go, you go for a job and you're being paid. Well, we'll take Very a short fun. break because <laughs> this conversation has continued. You know, the truth is, they say it takes 21 days, right? To form, create, habit. To form, to form a habit. habit. Our own is how many years now we form this habit. <laughs> so, so how we are going to correct this? That's what we'll talk about when we come up after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.